Hello drummers and other creatures. Today we're going to take a look at how to get going improvising with eighth note beats. Uh, improvising is an important facet of drumming. A lot of what we do is kind of made up on the spot but within certain frameworks. So if you're playing a rock song you're going to be playing certain rock beats that fit with the song. If you do anything too wild or wacky it's not going to work uh, but a lot of the time you want to have some some freedom to move around with your beats, moving the bass drum and the snare drum around, making up fills as you go along and so on and so forth. And uh, this is one of the videos I'm making to help you kind of get into that process. Here's a short example of the kind of thing we're going to be looking at in this video. For many of us, when we're getting started out with this instrument, the thought of improvising, of just making stuff up as you go along, is a bit daunting. Uh, a lot of us have been programmed to be very concerned about whether we're doing the right or wrong thing, whether something fits, uh, what the neighbours think, and so on and so forth. And so we have a lot of resistance to just letting stuff happen. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're basing this lesson on eighth note beats, and we're going to look at just fitting stuff around that. And when we play uh, rock beats, a lot of the time we're playing the eighth note pattern on the hi-hats like this. One and two and three and four and. The first thing we're going to do is just loosen up. So while I'm playing the hi-hat, I'm going to play the snare uh, and I'm going to play the bass at the same time whenever I feel like it. And you know what to start with? Let's not even think about the eighth notes. All we're going to do is play a steady pulse on the hi-hat, making a, a nice gentle hi-hat sound. And I'm going to play the snare and the bass drum anywhere the hell I want to. I'm not going to think about four beats in a bar, three beats in a bar, whatever. I'm just going to hit the snare sometimes at the same time as the hi-hat, hit the bass drum sometimes at the same time as the hi-hat, and just see what happens. Do not judge what happens? All you're trying to do is stay nice and relaxed, hit the snare sometimes, hit the bass drum sometimes. That's it. There's no right or wrong particularly. That's all there is to that. Now, you may or may not find that to be easy to do. If you feel resistance in your body to just throwing the bass drum and the snare drum around like that, okay, sit with that exercise a little bit, get yourself relaxed with it. If it feels really easy, entertain yourself with the kind of patterns that you can make and start to listen to the, the musical suggestions that you get there. You don't have to do anything with it. You're just getting used to listening to yourself. And uh, you might find that you start to respond to certain patterns or you make a pattern and you keep repeating it. So, I don't know, for example, you might get a bass and two snares and that might pop up and you might want to repeat that. All sorts of things might happen. If you sp spend some time with this idea, you can create something. Now, once you've repeated that pattern, you can maybe reverse it. Instead of a bass and two snares, you can play a snare and two basses.
maybe you could have a little conversation between the bass and two snares and the snare and two basses. And again, it's just a suggestion and you don't have to worry too much about whether you're leaving this much gap or that much gap or what the count is or anything. When you've got into the spirit of this a little bit, the next thing you can do is add a crash. And you can make the crash coincide with either a bass drum or a snare drum stroke, uh, or both, whatever you like. You're trying to now allow your uh, right hand or left hand, well, depending whichever is the hand you're playing your hi-hat with, you're allowing it to reach out and do something a little bit different. And you've got the crash, uh, you've got the ride, so sometimes allow that to embellish or accentuate what you're doing, something like this. guess doing too much for that might do your head in a little bit but uh, again you're, you're just allowing yourself to experience the freedom within the sort of creating a pulse and adding snare and bass to it to to do what the hell you want with it so you'll start to develop a lot more confidence if you play around with this and it's kind of fun it's fun to do silly things like this without any really sort of strict goal in mind now that you've got the hang of just allowing yourself to be sort of free within the the structure of the hi-hat pulse, playing the snare and bass where you like, and maybe identifying some patterns and playing around with them a little bit, adding some cymbal strokes and so on, we can start maybe creating a little bit more structure around that. And again, we're focusing on sort of eighth note rock beats today. Uh, so for example, what we can do is add the snare on the two and four this time and move the bass freely. So we're gonna have the pulse played on the hi-hat one and two and three and four and the snare is going to play the two and four as we hear in you know whatever millions of, of beats it's called the back beat and then we're going to move the the bass drum freely now if you're comfortable doing this that's cool but i recommend counting your way through it one and two and three and four and and allowing yourself to keep counting and uh, again allow yourself to mess it up as well don't be too strict that we set an intention to play the snare on the two and four and the hi-hat on all the eighth notes, uh, let the bass drum move around. And that, you know, maybe you'll miss a snare drum note here or there, or yeah, it doesn't really matter. It, it's mainly about getting into the spirit of the thing. So let's do that. One and two and three and four and. And you'll start to notice that that pattern, the, the pattern that you're doing with your hands here, the snare on two and four, the hi-hat on one and two and three and four and all the eighth notes, that will start taking care of itself. And all you're doing really is listening to the, the bass drum. And we can then swap it around and we could play a, a permanent pattern on the bass drum, but move the snare around a bit more. So again, a standard thing to do here would be just to play the bass on one and three, a nice simple pattern. but. I'm going to try and move the snare around as I like, like this. One and two and three and four and.
Okay, and you notice my right foot decided to do some other stuff. Uh, it's okay, it doesn't really matter. The, again, we're building the confidence to be able to, to improvise and just do what the hell we want that feels right. Now that you feel a bit more comfortable with adding some structure to the process, what we're going to do next is we're going to alternate between playing a standard beat, let's say a bass on one, the and of two and the three, and the snare on two and four. We'll play this beat. You can play any beat you like. Um, and we're gonna play one bar of the beat, and then we're gonna play one bar doing whatever with the bass and snare, like this. And I'm not thinking whether it sounds good, I'm just getting used to playing the bass, the snare, and feeling that it's just happening spontaneously. Once you feel comfortable just moving between one bar of prescribed groove and one bar of randomly improvised thingies, um, let's do three bars of groove, one bar of improvised thingy. I'll play a different groove this time. I'm going to accentuate the beginning of each four bar phrase with a crash, so it's a good exercise in keeping track of all that stuff as well. Now the intention again is play around with this for as long as you feel like it. Just kind of enjoy the process and as we did with the very first exercise, listen out for things that you like. If something comes up that you like, if it feels familiar from somewhere, there's only so many sort of combinations of stuff that are going to happen within the, the sort of eighth note uh, structure. But you, you, you can repeat things, uh, you can think about reversing patterns. So if you did bass, snare, bass, snare something, you change it to snare, bass, snare, bass the next time around. And again, the main thing is, if you screw it up, don't worry, it doesn't matter. Your brain is learning how to deal with the situation. Now we've got the um, one bar, one bar exercise and the three bars, one bar exercise. Uh, we can maybe add the crashes in and do the same thing again. You, you get the idea, right? But let's do it with the one bar, one bar thing. So I'm just going to play again a, a fixed beat pattern on the first bar and then I'm going to improvise the second bar but this time I'm not only playing bass and snare but I'll add some crashes in for good or, or bad measure. Let's see what happens. Once you've got the hang of that, you can add that to the three bars of fixed pattern, one bar of improvised pattern, and you're good to go. Finally, let's improvise along to music. Now, this can be a tune that you put on in your headphones. I was going to say in, in your Walkman, but there you go. Uh, you can put something on in your headphones, uh, or you could just sing something to yourself in your head, a familiar tune, or make up a bass line. Often I, I sort of practice playing stuff and just make up a bass line and sing it to myself in my head or out loud very often. But what we're going to do now is we're going to try and make it feel good and musical. So you can move the bass around, you can move the snare around, um, but feel the music that you're playing along to at the same time. Now, since this is an exercise, don't try and confine yourself too much. Um, when you go out and play with the band, there will be songs that you're playing where you really have to stick to a pretty um, repeating groove pattern, and it's not going to help the song if you deviate from that too much. In other situations, you might find you've got a reasonable amount of flexibility for what you do 
uh, with the, the rhythmic patterns you're playing, uh, you need to learn how to, to judge that. But for the time being, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to play along to Chain of Falls by Aretha Franklin in my head, and I'm just going to improvise around how the song makes me feel rhythmically. So have a go at these exercises and see how you get on with them. If you enjoy, then keep working on it until you feel that you have the confidence to vary your eighth note beats, to be able to play different snare and bass drum patterns. And it can help you also uh, kind of accelerate the process of acquiring more vocabulary because your body gets more and more relaxed and comfortable with all the different variations that are possible when you're playing the drums. There's, there's, there's you know, almost infinite amount of stuff you could do. So within this eighth note context, uh, that should help loosen things up a little bit. I hope this made sense. I hope you found it easy to follow and that there's something useful for you here. Please make sure to like and uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment. It's very helpful and uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to listen to your suggestions for anything you'd like to hear and see in a future video. Now, it might be time for you to go off and practice.